Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. This is the info session for studying abroad in Australia, New Zealand, and the Solomon Islands. My name is Janine. I'm the regional advisor for these programs. Um, few logistics, I will be recording this info sesh and we'll be posting it to YouTube. So if you need to access it later, um, it should be up there in a couple weeks. And we should have time for an open discussion at the end of the presentation. Um, I can't see the chat or anything as I'm talking, so I'll go ahead and check that at the end and um, keep your guys' mics muted just throughout the presentation. Okay. So, um, I'm going to begin with just a general introduction to study abroad. Um, just basic tips on applying housing travel, things like that. Um, if you're interested in general info sessions, these will be held every Friday at 2 to 3 p.m. And then if you're interested in learning more about like finances and how to fund your program, um, please attend our costs and scholarships info session. This is every Friday from 3 to 4 p.m. Just wanted to let you guys know that those topics will not be discussed in this presentation. Okay, I'm just going to begin with a quick video on study abroad. The University of California Education Abroad Program is a UC-affiliated study abroad program offering courses in over 40 countries all over the world. Whether your major is in the humanities, engineering, sciences, arts, or social sciences, you can study abroad. I study abroad at the University of Cape Town in South Africa during spring term. We study abroad at the University of Florida program in Italy for the fall. Study abroad at the University of North Carolina in Spain for a year. I study abroad in Thailand for the fall semester or in Brazil for the spring semester. So I study abroad in two different programs for both my year. UCE can offers a wide range of program types. You can study abroad for a year, semester, quarter, or summer. You can learn or improve on a foreign language take major, minor, or GE classes, and even do lab research or intern abroad. I also volunteered in a township. So at the township, we worked with young students and taught them about history and about culture. So yeah, if you are interested in general study abroad topics or finances, you can find all of those dates listed on the events tab of um, our website on the UCSB website for EAP. Okay. So before we get started, I do want to take a moment to address COVID and its impact on study abroad. I know some students might be concerned with kind of what studying abroad looks like during a pandemic. So just wanna let you know that as of now, you know, we're feeling really optimistic about our programs proceeding as normal for our summer and fall 22 terms. 
With that said, um, health and safety, you know, it is a priority of ours, and we're continuing to monitor the COVID situation worldwide. In the case that we feel a program is not safe, you know, that program would be canceled. So I do want to assure you of that. With that said, um, you know, we're focusing on the future and we are recruiting for our summer and fall 22 programs. And we currently have students abroad right now. So we have students going abroad for the winter and spring term. So we do wanna let you know that applying is free. There's no cost to you. So we encourage you to apply um, in the case that, you know, you may be worried about COVID or anything like that, students do have an option to withdraw by a certain deadline without incurring any fees, if that kind of helps ease your mind a little bit. But yes, we're feeling optimistic, we're recruiting um, for our programs, and now is the time to start thinking about applying if you are interested in studying abroad in the summer and fall terms of 2022, okay? So, why study abroad with UCEAP? Some of the reasons to pick our program specifically is that you would remain a UCSB student when you're abroad. You can also earn UC units, which helps ensure that you graduate on time. If you're a financial aid recipient, all of your grants, scholarships, loans travel with you when you study abroad. Um, there's also many opportunities to do an internship or research, depending on your program. And students often fulfill major, minor, or GE requirements when they are studying abroad. There's also amazing staff here locally on campus, as well as abroad to help support you throughout your journey. So some of the other benefits I would say is you know, ultimately studying abroad, it's an investment in yourself, whether that be personal, academically, um, professionally, you know, it's an opportunity to experience something new and challenge yourself outside of UCSB and outside of Isla Vista. There's a lot of things that you can learn outside of the Isla Vista bubble. So this really does kind of help open doors, you know, especially if you, if you want to learn a new language um, or become fluent in one, the best way to do that is to study abroad and actually live and study in a foreign country. Um, also, some of the benefits are you develop skills for employment, grad school, um, and life skills, such as being more patient and flexible. You'll also gain useful skills, such as like adapting to foreign bureaucracies, um, freshening up on your cross-cultural communication and problem solving. So ultimately students really do express that they come back from studying abroad feeling more confident and independent. So lots of benefits to studying abroad with education abroad. So I just wanna go over some guidelines that I think you should focus on as we go through our slides. Um, So when choosing a program, you'll wanna consider the eligibility requirements. So things such as GPA, class standing, major, any language prerequisites the program might have. Um, all of our programs tend to differ in terms of length, the terms they're offered, cost and location. So those are things that you'll want to um, consider as I go through the details of Australia, New Zealand and Solomon Islands today. So we're gonna start with Australia first. Um, in Australia, we have two types of programs. They fall under either themed programs or immersion. Our themed programs typically focus on a specific topic. And the way that these programs are designed is students get to choose from a limited number of courses usually, and they're designed specifically to the program's theme. The other type of program that we have in Australia is an immersion program. So these are um, usually at a local university. You get to choose from a variety of subjects out of their course catalog, and you'll be taking classes with local and international students. And oftentimes, not particularly for Australia since their native language is English, but our immersion programs can often be taught in English or a foreign language. 
So first we're gonna cover our themed programs. The first program we're gonna discuss is marine biology and terrestrial ecology at the University of Queensland in Brisbane. Brisbane, I believe actually, that's how you pronounce it. So like I mentioned, this is a themed program. You will be taking courses with UC students only. Some of the eligibility requirements are that you must have a 2.85 cumulative GPA. This is by the time of departure. And then you also must be a junior or a senior standing at the time of departure. So when we talk about um, class standing, that means how many units you have, not the year that you are, okay? So this is offered during the fall term only, and it goes from mid-August to late November. Another thing that you'll want to kind of know is when the terms start and end, because they often are not in line with the UCSB terms, as many of our programs are on the semester system. Okay, um, for academics, you have two set courses, marine biology and human and terrestrial ecology. For accommodations, you are assigned a homestay, and during field work trips, you live at the field stations. This program is impacted, meaning that there is limited capacity and they are accepting applications on a first come first serve basis. So if you are really interested in this program, I do highly suggest that you apply as soon as possible. So some unique study opportunities for this particular program, marine biology, is that you can gain field work and research experience working with unique species. Um, you get to partake in field studies at Heron Island, the Great Barrier Reef, Moreton Bay, and other locations in coastal Queensland. And then also conduct your own research project and learn how to write results in an academic paper. Feel free to scan the QR code if you would like to learn about one of our former students, Maddie, and her time in this program. We have a great um, UCSB EAP blog that many students have um, been so kind to write up some of their testimonials for us of their experience abroad. Okay, the next program that we have is International Security at the Australian National University. So this is the place to be if you're interested in anything, government, politics, diplomacy, and so forth. This is a themed program. Once again, um, you must have a 2.75 GPA, junior, senior, or graduate level um, by the time of departure. It's offered during the fall and spring terms and you must find your own accommodations um, in Canberra. So um, Australian National University, they offer on-campus accommodations and then these can be applied for through the university. All right, so ANU is Australia's top ranked university. And like I mentioned, it's located in Canberra. This is the capital of Australia. Um, the program has close ties to Australian federal government agencies, and like I mentioned, it's a great program if you're interested in those topics in terms of government politics and diplomacy. For academics, you'll enroll in four courses, so two courses from the ANU International Security course list and one course from any other department at the university of your choice. And then you'll also partake in one program hosted internship or a research project of your choice. Internships for this program include um, major national institutions, government departments, research centers, think tanks, and international embassies. And students will receive academic credit for their internship. Um, as you can see here, Guillermo, he was a participant in the international security program, and he interned at the embassy of Panama in Canberra. Um, in his words, he said, I learned strategies on how to network in a professional environment to make critical connections. These skills will aid me in my educational and career goals to continue improving my consummate professional work ethic. Okay. 
All right, the next program to discuss is Pacific Island Environmental and Community Health at the University of Queensland and Solomon Island National University. So this is a multi-site program, meaning you do one portion of it in Australia and the other will take place in the Solomon Islands. So you must have a 2.75 cumulative GPA and be junior or senior standing at the time of departure. It's only offered during the spring term and it's an opportunity to have laboratory and field training experiences. The accommodations are either homestay, dorm, or hotel. And you will be in classes with other UC and Solomon Island students. So throughout the duration of this program, you'll kind of experience living in hotels, research compounds, traditional leaf huts, um, while you attend the various research sites. So at times you'll be totally living off grid, like with no electricity. So that's kind of something unique about this program that I do want to note. Um, and it is open to all majors. So if you think that you're interested in this kind of hands-on field work, um, then this um, program may be of interest to you. So things to consider about the Pacific Island program is that it's kind of physically demanding. So field activities are a major component of the program. So you must be physically fit, able to swim and not have any um, serious medical conditions. So you'll be working in really remote regions of the Solomon Islands. And we just want to preface that like health and safety is key on this program. And it's really well suited for anybody with a focus in um, nonprofit service work, as well as environmental um, science majors or pre-med students with an emphasis on rural health. It's also targeted towards marine biology students um, who are interested in teaching sustainability. So what do the academics look like for this program? You'll partake in six weeks of classroom lab and field learning taught at the University of Queensland and then an intensive language training, um, training in Pidgin English. You'll also partake in five weeks of field excursions at the Solomon Islands National University. And you'll be working with remote communities on environmental and cultural issues, all surrounding community health and sustainability. So you're required to take four upper division courses um, from global to community environmental health, methods in environmental health and science, culture and history of Oceana and capstone research project is another thing that's included. Okay, so that was for all of our Australia themed programs. Now we'll go over Australia's immersion programs. So like I mentioned, our, immer our immersion programs um, take place typically at a local university and you can customize your coursework and choose from the university's course catalog. And you'll be taking classes with local and international students. So a total immersive experience. So we do have a program at the University of Melbourne. Um, Melbourne is a culturally diverse city with kind of a mix of modern and Victorian charm. And it's known for its food and music scene. So for this program, you have to have a 2.85 cumulative GPA maintained through departure, as well as be a junior, senior, or graduate standing at the time of departure. It's offered during the fall and spring terms, and students do find their own accommodations, whether that be apartments, storms on campus, or privately arranged off-campus rentals. And when I say that you find your own, um, oftentimes UCEAP, you know, they will provide you with the resources and the tools that you need to help to help you find the program. They just won't physically do it for you. So University of Melbourne, you know, this is Australia's second oldest university. It's one of the top ranked institutions with a strong undergraduate education um, disciplines. The media and communication program is considered to be the best in Australia, and they also have the largest science department in Australia. 
So the city of Melbourne, you know, this is ranked one of the most livable cities in the world and is a culturally diverse city about a mile north of the central business dis district. And the Yarra River borders the city. Now for the University of Queensland, Queensland, located in the city of Brisbane. So 3.0 cumulative GPA, a little bit higher on this one. Um, junior, senior, or graduate level standing by the time of departure offered during the fall and spring terms. Students also find their own accommodations for this program. The University of Queensland is one of Australia's premier research institutions with facilities at the Great Barrier Reef, Heron Island, Morton Bay, and many other locations. If you're a STEM student, this is a great option for you. The city of Brisbane, where the University of Queensland is located, it's home to hundreds of nationalities. So it's a very international multicultural city. And it's also one of the greenest cities in the country. University of Queensland is the fifth oldest university in Australia and home to the largest collection of Australian art. University of New South Wales, this is located in Australia's largest city, Sydney, and it offers a similar vibe to San Francisco, actually. They have, you know, an ocean coastline, a dramatic bay, hilly streets, so kind of a similar vibe to SF. They require a 2.85 GPA, junior, senior, graduate level by the time of departure. This is offered during the fall and spring semester and students find their own housing. The University of New South Wales, this is the number one institution attended by Australian startup founders. And it's a great university to attend if you are looking into studying business. So it offers unique focus in scientific, technological, and professional disciplines with tradition of innovation and research. So the city of us, um, the city of Sydney, you know, this is Australia's largest Sydney um, city, and it's actually closer to the beach than the University of Sydney campus is if you are a beach bum and would like to spend your free time there. <laughs> So University of Sydney, um, 2.85 GPA, junior, senior, graduate level. I'm sure you guys are getting the gist of this in terms of the eligibility requirements now. Um, fall and spring terms is when this is offered and students will find their own housing, either dorm, apartment, or host family. The University of Sydney offers cultural and scientific museums and has hundreds of student clubs and societies, and it's a very popular selection amongst our UCSB students. It's Australia's number one university, and it's highly renowned around the world. So the city of Sydney um, is close to some of the finest surf spots as well. So if you're into surfing, this is the spot to go, um, as well as the famed Sydney Opera House and the Harbour Bridge. A lot of students do little excursions to the bridge and climb to the top to take in all the views up there. So lots of cool things to do around Sydney. I just put together a little map for you guys to kind of see where all of the different universities are that I just mentioned. So Solomon Islands is up in the north. We have Brisbane on the east northern coast, um, Sydney, Canberra, and then Melbourne here. Few things to know about Australian academics, they do look a little bit different than they are here in the United States. Um, Australian courses, they have different grading skills. So you will wanna talk to UCEAP if you have any questions about how your, um, how your grades will convert um, the percentages and whatnot once you come back to the United States. For all of these programs, you're required to take 24 UC units. So each university's point system is a little bit different. So when you're looking at, at the program on the website, just be sure you're paying attention to the conversion um, rates from semester to quarter for these programs. For the Australian programs, they also have a heavier emphasis on writing. So 
your grades may be totally determined by like a research paper or your final. So keep that in mind as well. Australia also doesn't have GEs. They operate on a three-year academic plan. So this is just kind of in terms of their divisions and levels of classes. So we just want you guys to know to pr proceed with caution for courses in the 3000s and up and only enroll in those courses um, if you have prior knowledge of the topic or that's your major. Another thing that I thought was kind of interesting that I put on here is their jargon and like the words that they use to describe their academics. So, you know, your major in America is actually called your course in Australia. So your grades are marks. So that's also going to be kind of an adjustment getting used to their, their lingo as well. Okay, now we're going to discuss our programs offered in New Zealand. We offer a total of six programs in New Zealand, and all of these are immersion programs. So once again, you're taking courses at a local university. Um, you get to customize your coursework and choose from a variety of subjects and courses that are found in the university catalog. And then take classes with local and international students. So the University of Auckland, you must have a 2.85 GPA junior senior graduate level by the time of departure. This is offered in the fall and the spring and students will find their own accommodation, I believe in all of our New Zealand programs. So Auckland's located on the North Island. It's the nation's biggest city. The U of A campus extends over eight city blocks and is home to over 50 research centers. So they offer strong um, programs in Pacific studies, chemistry, history. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Maori studies, math, and statistics. So this is great for business and economics majors, education, engineering, law, medical, and health sciences, and arts. Um, Auckland, it's home to the largest Polynesian population in the world. So. I thought that was kind of a cool, fun fact. Next, we have the University of Otago, 2.85 GPA, junior, senior, graduate level by time of departure. This program's only offered in the fall. Um, this program starts late June and goes through mid-November. So something to keep in mind as well is that the um, terms don't always line up with UCSB students find their own housing for this program too. So Otago, it's located on the South Island in Dunedin. This is a unique coastal college, kind of like Santa Barbara, but it has a slight Scottish twist um, due to its settlement history. So it has ocean on one side, mountains on the other, just like UCSB. And it's New Zealand's number, um, New Zealand's first university. So I already mentioned this great for business, science, earth sciences, health sciences, and so forth. Okay. University of Waikato, 2.7 GPA, junior, senior, graduate. It's offered during the fall and spring terms and students find their own housing. This is located on the North Island in the city of Hamilton. So, um, it's kind of away from the hustle and bustle of big city life. It's a little bit slower paced. Um, the Maori people are fully integrated at Waikato University and they offer a complete calendar of like cultural events and um, do indigenous studies. Massey University is next on our list. Um, as you can see here, 2.75 GPA, junior, senior, graduate level. It's offered during the fall and spring terms. We don't have any programs in New Zealand that are offered for the year. So if you did want to go for a year term, you would have to do um, two back-to-back -back programs for it to equal the year. But that's definitely um, possible, and students have done this before. Um, students will find their own housing on this program. 
So Massey University is in Wellington. Wellington is nicknamed Windy Welly. I kind of like that. Um, it's another location that's similar to San Francisco. It has, you know, tons of hills and cable cars, and it's a windy city. So um, it's very energetic city full of cafes, museums, and galleries to, you know, fuel your creativity and your you know, get in touch with your adventurous side. There's lots of surfing and hiking there as well. And it's located in the Arts and Cultural District of Wellington on the North Island. We also have a program at Victoria University, 2.75 GPA, junior, senior, or graduate level. This is offered in the fall and the spring and students will find their own housing on this program. Um, Victoria University of Wellington, um, the School of Psychology offers forensic and cross-cultural psychology and cognitive and behavioral neuroscience. There's also research opportunities available. They have strong coursework in English and New Zealand literature, indigenous studies, linguistics, environmental and ecological, e ecological sciences, geography, political science, and theater and film. So this is located in the residential area of Kelburn, about a mile from the city center. Wellington, the capital of New Zealand, is home to the Beehive, New Zealand's parliament along the beautiful botanical gardens, as you can see pictured here. <laughs> we also have a program at the University of Canterbury. This is a newly introduced program. Um, it just started in 2021-22, so this year. You must have a 2.75 GPA junior, senior, graduate level. It's offered during the fall and spring. And this university is located in the vibrant city of Christchurch, which is on the east coast of the South Islands. There are internships available in this program in a variety of fields such as development, environmental science, computer science, media and communication, and marketing. They also have strengths in STEM, especially computer science and civil engineering. So here's a map of New Zealand and all of the different city locations in Auckland, Hamilton, Wellington, Christchurch, and Dunedin to kind of give you a point of reference. So similar to Australian academics, New Zealand academics look a little bit different than here at UCSB. You will, you will be required to take between 21 and 24 UC quarter units. Um, New Zealand's undergraduate program is three years. So third year courses in New Zealand correspond to U UC fourth year advanced courses and require, they typically require previous um, knowledge in the topic because they are very um, demanding. So you're also expected to have strong writing skills and be academically independent. So there isn't really anybody helping you or holding your hand throughout these programs. Um, and oftentimes a final or a paper will be like your whole grade. So something to keep in mind for academics. So now for some resources. Um, if you guys are curious about kind of where to find all of this information in terms of how many units you need to take and what courses are offered and so forth, um, if you're trying to find any of the academic information that I've mentioned today, you're going to want to go to the programs um, page on the UCEAP website and click academics. If it's a host university like um, Lund University in Sweden, you should be able to see their course catalog and you can search for cor um, current courses that are being offered. I'm sure you know about seasons in the summer southern hemisphere, but um, summer, summer is our winter there. So just note that when you're abroad to kind of think about weather, that it's gonna be the opposite of anything that it would be in the United States. 
Um, so New Zealand weather, the North Island is a little bit warmer than the South Island, still tons of rain. They're usually in the mid 70s in the summer. Um, Otago and the South Island gets pretty cold in the winter. And then for Australia, way less rain than New Zealand because New Zealand's like kind of more of a tropical island. Um, and then depending on the location, the weather in Australia is usually in the 50s and 60s in the winter and then gets in the 80s in the summer. Um, Tasmania and Melbourne do get cold. So if you're looking into the University of Melbourne, we do want to tell you to pack warm clothes. Okay. Um, feel free to scan this QR code. We have an awesome blog that a lot of students um, share their experiences with us and typed up their testimonials of um, their study abroad. So this is kind of a good way to get, you know, firsthand insight into what does it actually look like to be abroad and, you know, what were their experiences other than us just telling you to go. It's kind of, it's really beneficial, I think, to hear from the students themselves who have actually gone abroad on these programs. So I do encourage you to check out our blog and our YouTube channel. Um, another useful resource that may be worth checking out is our program comparison sheets. So these offer a side-by-side -side view of each country's programs. And you can find these on the UCSB website under program info and then just select Australia or New Zealand. They each have their own program sheets. And you can kind of see a side-by-side -side view of what the eligibility requirements are, the deadlines, the cost, et cetera, if you're trying to decide between two programs. Okay, I uh, just wanna talk about health, safety, and academic support real quick. So UC Study Center faculty liaisons based in Melbourne, Australia for both the UCEP programs. Um, so UCEAP, you know, we monitor health and safety concerns at all sites around the world. And we do have protocols in place at all of our program locations in the case there ever is any situations of like political unrest or if you need support abroad. So UCEAP provides on-site orientation as well once you arrive in your host country, and there you'll get to meet your support staff who will be helping you throughout your program. Okay, so what do we do now? A few next steps. So I do encourage you to continue to research the programs on the UCEAP website. Um, check out their eligibility, what courses they may offer, and see if, you know, those can fulfill any of your major, minor, or GE requirements. And then also check the application deadlines. Like I said earlier in the presentation, we are actively recruiting right now for summer and fall term. So if you're really thinking about going abroad next year, now is the time to start applying. So check those application deadlines. Many of them are coming up in January and February, okay? I also encourage you to talk to your academic advisors, whether that be your major advisor, your college advisor, or us here at the Education Abroad office. So um, you also, if you don't have a passport yet, I also highly recommend that you make that the first thing on your list of things to do is order a new passport because they are extremely backed up in terms of processing time, taking up to 12 weeks to process a passport, um, maybe even 16 weeks. I think it's like four months. So another great resource that we have for you guys is like I mentioned, our Friday info meetings. So if you wanna learn more about like general study abroad, um, such as how to apply and things like that, please attend one of our study abroad 101 info meetings on Fridays. And then last but not least, once you've chosen your program, you'll create, um, you'll create an account on the UCEAP portal and start your application. Okay. I went ahead and put together a list of deadlines for Australia for you. Um, so you can kind of see here that many of them are coming up in January and February. 
don't know where my list of New Zealand deadlines went. Sorry. Um, if you guys have questions, feel free to reach out to me. You can contact me via email. You can join any of my open office hours through QLess. These are my um, available times each week. And we also have peer advisors available in addition to myself, many of them who have also studied abroad and you know they're here in our office available to answer any questions you might have. So feel free to drop by any time. You don't need an appointment. Um, we're located in 2431 South Hall. Okay, that just about does it for my presentation. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen. And then if you guys have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them.